Well, with that being said, uh, I know Roy will be here throughout the morning, and so please join us uh, in uh, asking him questions. But as Roy said, you know, it's not just about big data, it's about the right data. And I think as we're all moving into the space, recognizing that uh, the increase of information uh, can be somewhat uh, overwhelming, particularly as companies are facing audit fatigue from gathering lots of data for different multiple needs and really looking at ways that we can integrate that uh, and make this all happen more seamlessly. With that being said, I'd like to, uh, speaking of, of complex and large systems, I'd like to move to uh, our next speaker, uh, who represents a company that has, that has many, uh, many connections throughout the globe in terms of production uh, and looking at uh, how we create a more circular and sustainable world. Cecilia Branston, who comes from H&M, is with us here today. And I'm just going to read uh, a little bit about the session um, here for her, um, which is, um, the, the session talk today is really going to be about the role that they're playing in going 100% circular. I think uh, a year ago when their CEO made the statement that the future is circular and that H&M would go 100% circular, it was inspiring to many of us who work in this space. And uh, we've had a chance to have some conversations over the last year as we start to look at how we can work with you, you all as a company as well to really uh, engage in the material side of that. So with that being said, I'd like to invite Cecilia up to share with us uh, the work that H&M is doing around 100% circular. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me well? Uh, encantada de estar aquí. I'm honored to be here in Barcelona today at this Circular Economy European Summit with such a great crowd, such great speakers. Thank you, Roy, for starting today in such an inspire, inspiring way. Uh, so what I would like to do today is to invite you to, to our 100% circular journey. And this is actually the way and the journey that we believe is the only way forward towards a more sustainable fashion future. So let's see if I can get the techniques to work. So even though we're in Inditex country, I guess you might have heard of us. Uh, we're H&M. We're the second biggest fashion retailer in the world after the previous mentioned Inditex, actually. And yes, we are present in more than 62 countries. Uh, we have more than 4,000 stores, a lot of employees, as you can see, 150,000 at least. And, uh, but what you might don't know is that we are actually a group of brands. So we also have other brands than the H&M brand. So it's COS, you might have heard of, and other stories. Ship Monday, Weekday, Monkey, and H&M Home. So we're actually a group of brands, and that's also, of course, one reason to why we have so many stores. So at H&M, we have a long history working with sustainability. In fact, we started already in the mid-90s uh, with our code of conduct, our chemical restrictions, our first organic cotton garments. Uh, and also, I think, looking at where we are today, we have come quite a long way uh, comparing to where we were back then. Um, and also, sustainability is actually embedded in our business idea to provide fashion and quality at the best price in a sustainable way. So basically, we want to make fashion sustainable and sustainability fashionable. Can you see me back here? I think I'm, I'm almost too short for this. <laughs> but I have heels today, so I'm longer than, than normal. But is the fashion industry sustainable today? What do you say? Any guess? No, it's not. And of course, the fashion industry, as many other industries, we face a lot of challenges. Uh, I think I read that the fashion industry is the second most polluting industry in the world after oil. I'm not sure if that's true, but anyhow, we have a lot of challenges. And I think common for these challenges is that we as a company, even though we're big, we cannot solve it on our own. So we need an industry to join, and we need a systemic change in the way that fashion is made and used. So today I will focus on, on one of the major challenges I think that the fashion industry has, and not surprisingly, perhaps in the Circular Economy Conference, it's the challenge of resource use. So, the fashion industry, no, sorry, <laughs> too quick. Uh, I think 
I know I'm preaching to the choir here, and I will not spend too, man, too much time on, on telling you about the why we think this is an important challenge. But I think what I want to is really bringing this challenge to the fashion industry and tell you a bit about the context in the, in the fashion industry. So we heard Ellen yesterday talking about the world's resources and that they are ultimately finite. And that's, of course, also uh, the, the status in the fashion industry. So I think 85% almost of all the raw material that we use uh, is either polyester or cotton. And in the case of polyester, it's quite obvious. It's an, it's an oil-based material. And in the case of cotton, it's not only a really water-intense and chemical-intense crop, it's also depending on a finite uh, land mass, a land mass that perhaps should be needed for something else. And at the same time, we use these resources very, very unsustainable. Uh, so I think out of the 90 million tons of textiles produced each year, more than half of it ends up in landfills. And looking at, from a national perspective, I'm from Sweden, uh, we throw away eight kilograms of textile per year in Sweden out of the 15 kilograms we consume. And only three kilograms is uh, collected, and mainly then for reuse. And I think looking at the global perspective, we have even a, a higher rate that goes to landfill, but in the UK, they're a bit better actually. They, only 30% goes to landfill, but still it's a lot of, resources that could have been used for reuse and recycling. So it's a very unsustainable resource use and it's a very linear model. No, I'm so. So, and, and, and also uh, the UN predicts that we will be 9 billion people on this planet by 2050 and the rapidly growing middle class. And this of course will put even higher pressures on these resources. And I think we as an industry need to think Will the efforts that we make be enough to cater for these people? These people would like to have uh, access to clothes and, and to express themselves uh, through fashion and what they wear. So will it be enough cotton? Will it be enough land or water uh, to provide us with these resources? Well, we don't have all the answers right now, but I think what we do know is that we need to change. In order to be successful in 10, 20, 30 years from now, we can't continue in the same linear model as we have today. So we need to move from a linear to a circular economy, where we maximize the utility and the value of these resources in endless loops, uh, as we also saw yesterday and as we saw in the film this morning. Uh, so I think we need to decouple the growth uh, and our growth from the use of virgin and finite resources. And we need to make sure that both social and economic development can happen in a way that the planet can afford within the planetary boundaries. Uh, and I think having that in mind, we believe that we, as the second biggest retailer in the world, has a very important role to play here. Uh, we need to lead this change towards a circular fashion industry. And that's why we have committed to this vision that Lewis also mentioned. We will become 100% circular. And that means that we will have a circular approach to how fashion or products are made and used. And we will only use recycled or other sustainably sourced materials. And I'm fully aware that this is a very bold vision and we're not 100% sure exactly on how to get there, but it's a really important statement. It's an important vision to have because we should strive for perfect. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, one of the roles that we need to play to get everyone on board. So I would like to introduce you to the concept of a circular uh, approach to how products are made uh, and used a bit more in detail. It means that we need to take a holistic approach to circularity, incorporating our whole value chain. Everything from how we design the products, that we make sure that the products have a quality good enough for uh, a, a long uh, lifespan, that we make sure that we design in a way so we facilitate for reuse and recycling in the end. It means that we will only use recycled or other sustainably sourced materials, and I will not go to deep uh, now because I will talk further about that in a second. But it also means that we will need 
to use sustainable production processes. And here it's a lot about chemical use, water use, energy use, uh, because this is where the real big impact uh, happens in the fashion industry. And of course, we need to work towards prolonging the lifespan of these products as long as possible. And that will mean that we will need to use longer, we need to care and repair. In all our clothes, for example, we have a clever care label that promotes a more sustainable caring of, of your products, washing lower temperatures, hang dry instead of tumble dry, how to repair, how to care for the products in a better way. And we also have some tips and tricks around that on our website. And of course, we need to allow others to use, and that can be made in, in a lot of different ways. And I think one of them uh, I will come to in a second, it's our garment collecting program. And finally, when that's not possible, we need to recycle these materials and make sure that these materials are the raw material for our future collections. Oops. So, the H&M Garment Collecting Program. How many of you knows about this? Nuria, you know about this. <laughs> Thank you. How many have used it? Yeah, a few. Well, I think we've been doing this for quite a while now. Uh, we started back in 2013 to collect clothes and home textiles in all our stores worldwide. And we collect independently of brand and independently of condition for reuse and recycling. And of course, following the waste hierarchy and prioritizing reuse. And so far, we have collected 38,000 tons uh, globally since the start. And just to get kind of a sense how much that is, it's approximately 190 million t-shirts. But we do not only collect t-shirts, just so you know. And we also had some uh, uh, exciting campaigns around this, because spreading the awareness of seeing old garments as a resource is, of course, something we really need to take a big responsibility in doing as well. And we need the customers on board. The customers need to be aware. So this is from the latest one. It's from the World Recycle Week that we had earlier this uh, spring. And this is MIA, who made a fantastic music video. I will not show it now, but you can Google it. OK, so that's a circular approach to our products are made in use. But then, as I said, the, the, the question of material is very important, and the material use has a real big impact looking from a product uh, life cycle perspective. And also I think this is where we as a company really can influence. This is our direct decision. So we say that we will only use recycled or other sustainably sourced materials and that we will maximize the use of recycled materials and complement that with materials that has been sustainably sourced. So how do we do that? Well, we have uh, a cotton goal. Uh, we had that since 2010. Uh, and we say that by 2020, we will only have sustainable cotton in our value chain. And cotton is our biggest and most important material today. And that means better cotton, recycled cotton, and uh, organic cotton. And already, we're one of the biggest users of organic cotton in the world. But of course, we use other materials as well. And today, or last year, 2015, we used 20% uh, sustainable materials in our value chain. Uh, and I think we are big here as well. We are the second biggest user of recycled polyester in the world. We're the second biggest user of Tencel, the first biggest user of responsible down. So we do a lot here, but we definitely need to do more because we need to reach to 100%. And that's, of course, a challenge. But I think having our conscious products, our conscious collections in stores, our conscious exclusives collection is a way for us to, make the, to, to scale this and to make this happen in a quicker way. Uh, we're also very proud of our denim reborn collections, our closed loop denim collections. Uh, and here we use recycled cotton that comes from our garment collecting program. So it's, uh, it's uh, post-consumer waste recycled cotton. Uh, and we had several collections and we continuously have products in our stores. So look for the green hang tag saying recycled cotton from collected garments. And just to, say, to show that we have also made an LCA of this recycled cotton that we use. And here you really can see that using recycled materials has a big environmental impact. impact. Here we show the impact for water usage and, and climate, uh, use, uh, climate impact. But 
to reach to 100%, of course, we are depending on innovation. But we also have a responsibility here to actually drive that demand and, and to drive this innovation and accelerate this innovation if possible. So therefore, uh, we, have, uh, we, are, we are working with this in a lot of different ways. We, we work with Lewis and, and Fashion Plus, for example. Uh, we also have invested in a company called Warn Again, who works on re chemical recycling technology on, for polyester and polycotton blends. Uh, the H&M Group has invested in Selfie, which is a Swedish company promoting reuse. Uh, and they are selling the goods you don't want on the Swedish version of eBay. So that's also a way that we work on, on, on trying to make this happen through innovation and innovative uh, business models. And then, last but not least, we have the Global Change Award. And that's, it's actually the H&M Foundation. But do you know about the Global Change Award? Well, at least some of you. No one have applied? Well, the Global Change Award is an award uh, for uh, disruptive innovation within the field of circular materials, circular business models, and circular production processes. And the, uh, it's five winners each year, uh, and they will share a grant of one million euros uh, between them. And it's also an acceleration program to, together with the KTH, it's the Swedish uh, University of Technology, and the uh, Accenture. And this year we had 2,900 contestants almost from 130 countries, so it's really big and really uh, amazing. And also, I talked about the garment collecting program before. Uh, the earnings that we make from that, we donate uh, to the Hong Kong Research Institute of Textile and Apparel. And they will look into also recycling technologies for polycotton blends. So, to sum up, I have eight more seconds. Uh, I think we believe that circularity will be the key uh, to, to our future success. And we as a company have an important role to play there uh, because we believe that we can lead the change towards the circular uh, resource model of fashion. But we need everyone on board to do this. We cannot do it alone. So collaboration is also, of course, super import important. So let's, let's uh, join our efforts towards a more sustainable fashion future. Thank you. Cecilia, and Thanks. you'll be pleased to know I got the app working. So we do have some good questions. Ah, good. Shall we maybe um, step over to yeah. the chair for a moment and, and take a few of these? How much time do you all want us to have for questions so I can moderate any? All right, we're going to put the time up there that you want and we'll, uh, okay, you've got that. So the first question, Cecilia, is um, first of all, is it possible to buy any of these circular apparel items now if I go into an H&M store? And you talked a little bit about the denim. Is that the yeah, only Yeah, yeah. The denims, yep. we have products in our store all the time. And we actually had a campaign or a more kind of a collection as well that came out a bit earlier this year in, uh, in October. So I hope some of these garments are still in store as well. But yes, uh, it's possible. You just need to look for the green hang tag saying post-consumer recycled cotton from collected garments. And then you know it's the closed loop cotton. It's both men, women, and children. Excellent. Um, the next question is, um, will you support local social initiatives to collect and recycle the textiles that you collect? So. Yeah, looking at local initiatives. I think, I think it doesn't matter who collects as long as we collect. And I think we have a, lo a global partner for our collection, and we work with a company called ICO there. But I think we also support local charity uh, organizations. So we do donate two euros cent of each kilogram that we have collected to local charities. So mm -hmm. that's also a thing that we do. And you can see that we have a, actually a, a web page where we're transparent, both with the volume we have collected and also with the money that we donate. But I think, I think we do not want to compete with local charities that collect. I think it's brilliant, as long as they collect for reuse and recycling, uh, so no clothes gets incinerated. I think it's a joint mission. But of course, we want to make it easy accessible for our customers uh, to use uh, or, or to, to have a place to leave their old garments. So therefore, I think it's important for us to do it all countries, all stores, right. all year round. And the more demand there is coming from big retailers such as H&M, the more cottage industries can pop up and yeah, su support I think this. It is a transformation of the industry. So the, the textile sorters, they need to be the new suppliers of, 
of our, our fiber producers. And, and that's a journey that we've started with our closed loop cotton, but it's a journey that will probably take some time because it's, it's about changing the way the sorter sorts. It's, it's about changing the way our supply chain source. Uh, and of course, we need technology to, to make that happen as well. Yeah. Okay, the next question I think is really good because it gets at the heart of the business model that not just companies like H&M are facing, but really anyone uh, that wants to enter the circular economy. Um, so recycling requires investment, as we know, and also if we're proposing a longer longevity around clothing, it could potentially mean fewer sales. So how does H&M approach embracing circularity in this new circular economy, but also looking at your current business model and it, that it supports increase in sales? I think uh, it would be a need for fashion. I talked about the increased population in the mm -hmm. future. Everyone will need clothes. But as I said, we need a circular approach to, to make this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think for us, of course, it's important to offer this sustainable uh, fashion to everyone. I think we might want to make this available for everyone. And I don't think it should be a niche product with to a higher price that only a selected few can have. So I think it's, it's just important that we make sure that we provide this fashion in the most sustainable way and in a circular way. Mm -hmm. So um, an another question I think is good because your commitment is to circular materials and or sustainable materials. And so looking outside the breadth of that, uh, can you talk a little bit about what you all think about in terms of reduction of water, energy, or chemicals used in the dye process? Of course, it's super important. And that was actually also part of both from a raw material perspective and from a production process uh, perspective. I think all our materials, we measure and evaluate from a life cycle perspective. And also we need kind of some kind of third party verification that these are actually better than the conventional alternative. So LCA is the made by fiber benchmark or the HIG uh, index uh, MSI could be, or, or cradle to cradle fashion positive material library could also be ways of for us to ensure that the materials we are using are better from all these perspectives. And that's also one of the reasons why I showed you the LCA we made on recycled cotton. Because here you really can see that it has a big impact. And of course we need those kind of proofs. And whatever we call a recycled or sustainably sourced materials will be an evaluated material that we see is better and also that the third party verifies better. Mm, great. And then um, I touched on it a minute ago with sort of longevity, but as you all uh, look at some of the big models out there around shared economy, circular economy, but also the, the concept of making clothes last longer, is that something that you all are going to advocate for as well? I think quality has always been a really important thing for us. It's even part of our business idea. And, and for some of our brands have taken it even longer, like COST, for example, which really provides uh, longevity in everything they do. Uh, but longevity and quality is core. It's key to how we design our products. And of course, there will be some fashionable garments that will be last for a longer time. But I think in, in Sweden, we have a research product uh, called the mix of future fashion and there they look into ultra fast fashion versus super slow fashion i think that can be an interesting thing actually actually so the materials you choose for the ultra fast fashion perhaps are are it's other types of materials it can be biodegradable it can be easy recyclable mm -hmm. uh, so and then we have the super long kind of slow fashion which right. is something else but i think at h and we do not only provide you the party top for the Friday evening. We provide uh, you with children's kind of outdoor wear that they should use every day for as at least for a year until they grow into another size and then their brothers and sisters can use it. So I think exactly. we provide a lot of different types of products and they should have the best quality available, of course. Yeah. Yesterday, Cecilia and I were on a, a webinar together and I talked a little bit about the model of the carpet industry and how the alignment around materials allows the industry to take back anyone's carpet. Is H&M already taking back other apparel if it ends up in the bins? W or are you looking at partnering with other um, retailers around taking back common materials? I, I think if I understand your question correctly, we collect independently of brand and we also collect home textiles. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, our partner Ico, they works with a lot of different brands and I think we're in the C100, we talked to Nike about collections, I think. Mm -hmm. And we talked to local charity organizations and we will do some like campaigns together and stuff like that. So I think, as I said before, it's just important that we get this material into the circular system. And then it doesn't matter if it's us or someone else who collects it. 
That's right, and, and as you mentioned, that the Retex committee work is looking at multiple brands. Uh, yeah, looking yeah. At mechanical So we do together. collaborate a lot, and we, like for finding these kind of recycling technologies, we work with the Circular Innovation Group uh, that the Fashion Positive is running. So we mm. do collaborate a lot already, of course, uh, within this yeah. field. Okay, we have qu time for one last question. So this, I'll end this one with one that's a little bit future thinking, but what about production as a service model? I mean, could you see H&M ever getting to, or have you talked about looking at apparel as a service as opposed to ownership? I think, I think in the future there will be different ways uh, to consume, and of course we need to be on that uh, train. Uh, yeah. and, and I think it's, it's also demand driven, of course. What does the customer want? But of course we think in this, like how do we make sure that we are still there in, in 10 years? If that means that we need to rent out some clothes, perhaps that yeah. we will do that. But I, I, I think there will be a lot of different ways of consuming mm -hmm. and a lot of different ways of, of providing with this fashion. And yeah, we will just find the right way for us That's to great. do it. That's great. All right, well, Cecilia, thank you thank so you. much for speaking today. <laughs>